Soul lifting one, messages. I hope he will give you more. content. I want us to Prayer take a short reading and videos from the book that will of help Psalms, you chapter one twenty seven. Remember to it's subscribe to the channel. Ways. That like the help video you the are about to watch. They will and labor in on vain to build a house. God's mercy doesn't protect the city. All the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed, son. Stay blessed. One more time, Lord, I lift my hands in I lift my hands in praise. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. I praise you. I praise you. Lord, we declare that forever you will be glorified in our lives. Forever you will be glorified in this house. This remains a place where you will be glorified. That men will continue to see your awe and your majesty in and through our lives. Thank you for making us signs and wonders. Epistles of your grace. Epistles of your majesty. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Hallelujah. For as long as you continue to embrace the person of the Holy Spirit, for as long as you continue to be childlike enough and allow his word to change you, I give you a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Your life will surprise you. It's true. It's true. It's true. The system for the lifting of men in the kingdom will never change. It will never be uniquely constructed just because of you. What you think about it or don't think about it makes no difference. The way, you see, God does not align to our terms. No. We are the ones who will humble ourselves and align to his ways. Are we together? If at all God is merciful, he stretches his hands to bring you 
not that he stretches to leave his position so the idea is not to invent your way you don't seek god at his terms it's pride and let me tell you something please listen to me many preachers are getting it wrong the way they are building people will frustrate them somewhere along the line it is true now i i must confess to you it is difficult to build people holistically it is very difficult because our individual callings you see the way god works with men is that because of his call upon your life he tilts you towards a dimension of himself and you will have to focus in that area to gain mastery the side effect of that focus is that you will trivialize other areas are we together now if god has called me into the ministry of healing for instance chances are that because of my focus my staying in that area all the books i read all the conferences I go to will be along the healing ministry. Chances are that I will pay little attention to leadership and administration because it has not been captured in my experience with God. That is the reason why the unity of the body is important. Because seeking God in that way has a side effect, but he created the unity of the body to give that balance now my refusal to align with the body will make me mentor people along a line and very soon you will see a pattern of deficiency in a particular dimension it was produced by we preachers so i can you can see people who are prosperous powerful but they have no regard for spiritual things no regard no intelligence no nothing excellence yes sir administration yes sir leadership yes sir prosperity as much as we know financially speaking yes sir but their spirits are it's unfortunate the knowledge of god zero passion for god zero evangelism zero conformity to the life and the character of christ zero every time you see a prevalent pattern within a people the communicators the shapers the molders of their understanding are to be blamed and so i admit to you as a man of god that it is difficult to build people holistically it's very difficult very difficult because sometimes you will have to go out of your natural inclination with god to supply that balance but it is worth it if you love people are you getting what i'm saying Our passions are not only dependent on the Holy Spirit, they are also dependent on our age ranges. Please listen carefully. This is not what I'm teaching tonight. I just want to express something. A young man seeking God from between the ages of 10 to maybe 25 or 30, because of the, the reality that most likely a major part of that young man's life in terms of needs and all of that is being there is usually someone who is helping him out with his decisions with resources are we together so it is justifiable that that young man does not seem to see any need in developing his mind and trying to make sure that resources are available for instance a man of 35 to 50 has his passions altered because children have come into the equation their development has come into the equation there are responsibilities at this point the implication of your life and your decisions no longer affect you alone they affect society is that true they affect the faith of another person they affect the destinies of the young ones that you are raising biologically or otherwise and then a man who is from 50 upwards his passions his interest is also different so you have to be careful you have to look at these factors in opening your spirit to be mentored are you listening to what i'm saying if i listen to a man of 65 years or 70 years 
he has a lot to tell me in terms of experience and knowledge but the truth is that it will be unfair for my desire and interest and passions to be forced to resonate with him i will find out that that conformity will affect my growth process are you getting what i'm saying so when god calls a man god does not only give you a message god gives you an age range where your message and ministry becomes effective most preachers don't know this if I preach to elderly people now of say maybe 60 years to 80 years, let me tell you the truth. They are not going to be touched by my message. They will only be impressed that the things they learned old, I learned young. At the end of that message, they won't stand up and say, "My, I couldn't sleep. No, there is nothing I would tell them that is worth lacking sleep. The mistake has been made. The lessons have been learned. Their focus is on pouring their lives to a younger generation. Please listen to me. Don't hate anybody, but be careful who mentors you. Because you will be a reproduction of not only the mindset, but the interests, the perspectives. It's important. The Bible says David served his generation. Served his generation. A man can be talking to you who has estates a man can be talking to you who has 30 branches as a pastor a man can be talking to you who has raised sons and daughters around the world and the truth is he does not really have any need a man can be talking to you from the perspective of his sabbath he has entered his sabbath experientially there are some things that he will not have the time to teach you are we together they will be focusing on maintaining certain levels not helping you get there because he has arrived there and chances are that when you learn from him you will only maintain your current level he's teaching you maintenance not growth are we together the way I teach and guide people 10 15 years ago I'm still a young man but it's not the same context are we together people are married now they have families their needs are shifting their needs are changing so a young man can have a fellowship where 99 percent of the people are unmarried 99 percent are students just got admission the context of his teaching his example his emphasis i don't expect that kind of person to be teaching on love and relationship and all of that no the the messages in that kind of cycle should be very finite god the Holy Spirit pressing into God. Are we together? There's no issue of counseling over love and relationship. I, I, it's on seriousness at that level. Because the, the epicenter of their pursuit should be God. To know him. But a good leader, not just a man of God, must be able to bring relevant teachings that align with the transitory processes of people's lives. Otherwise, a time will come where your message may be powerful but no longer relevant. You see, people only stay under you when they can see the applicability of your messages. Not the power that is dispensed from them. You will be surprised that your message can become so powerful. But the context of your communication no longer fits those people. So you must learn. Are you getting blessed? I don't want you to fail in life spiritually and otherwise so my assignment is not just to bring the word of God the power of the Holy Ghost my assignment is to be sensitive and to bring the teachings as we all transition together are we together so that children will not come and you find out that in everything you've learned about God there was no provision to grow spiritually while taking care of your family then you have to live your spiritual life to take care of your family because the preacher did not tell you in his teaching you you know God based on his teaching only if you don't have children but now when you have children there is no system of incorporating other things and the pursuit of God when he was teaching you how to know God 
you were probably a student who had all the time but right now you are not only a worker you are a supervisor and he's still giving you the template of someone who has eight hours free to love god are you seeing that now and that may no longer work and you will feel guilty that because you could not do the things you were doing before the way you are doing them based on his interpretation he will make you feel you are backsliding not knowing that every face has a strategy for remaining spiritual are you getting what i'm saying now if you don't learn this a day will come certain quality of people will never come to your church because your message does not capture god as presented to people within that frame of influence remember he told elijah eat for the journey is far by the time you become a managing director who may be in a country just for two months in a whole year the man of god must be able to bring a strategy for spiritual growth that will give you the same result as an idle student who has eight hours in his disposal otherwise you will find out that you apply your your eight hours with god everyday formula and you find out that you are knowing god but your company is crashing and then you say kai what is all this then he will tell you leave the company and focus on god then you focus on god and find out that something about your life is becoming ineffective many believers are afraid because the things they used to do the transitions in their lives no longer afford them all the time again i never would have believed that my life would be this busy and this occupied time is gold for me you see that that means there must be a system of time redemption such that my spiritual life does not suffer and other things also will not suffer are you getting blessed so we have people who know god but they are not blessed we have people who get to a point and certain kinds of people cannot come to hear the word of god upon their lips the reason is because they do not have an applicable message or a pattern that ministers christ to them being a man of god is not just having power and the ability to speak hallelujah I used to preach a lot faster than I do now but I came to a point where I had to ask myself what exactly is the purpose of preaching what is the purpose of communication and I found out that the purpose is understanding it is terrible to have people sit under you for many years and really never understand you you may be impressed by their shouting Woo! and you will be so flattered let me tell you the truth with all humility you see there are levels when god brings you to every point that you are under pressure to prove has been proven so settle down and build people you see that yes i will be a foolish person at this level of my life to be proving that the anointing of the spirit is upon me to be proving whether i have access to revelations or not it's not pride these realities have been proven the thing to prove now is the hand of god by the lives you raise now you can go on to a secondary school or a campus and see a young guy under pressure for someone to shout under the anointing because at that level he's seeking for validation so his pressure will be that the, if at the end of that meeting only two people fall, he can go back and lock the door for three days. Say, Lord, what happened? That's the reason why you see people like Papa Ia Deboe. They just come and say, the Lord bless you. And I mean, they are so not concerned whether you shout or not. They, they know what they are giving you. It's up to you to believe whether you have it or not. Someone can be falling in their presence and truly speaking, you see that they are not interested. The point has been proven. You can't keep proving a point forever. 
you must win yourself out of that childishness and focus on building people my pride now let me tell you this at the level God has brought me by his grace my pride is no longer my results my pride is your results if I celebrate my results now tea and bread say everybody come and look God gave me tea it's a sign that I've failed God has been fair enough to me now my own result is your result are you seeing that now so my focus has shifted it's not just on myself God has helped me God has tried for me I will be wicked to still think about myself I don't go to preach and wondering will they give me an honorarium and if yes how much will it be no no my heart God sees is that Lord you have helped me you have granted me understanding now Lord let your word prevail over your people you see that so that from nowhere a young man rises with a strange level of grace a family is able to capture dimensions of God that they can reveal you are finding purpose you are finding your place in life you are causing and stirring revivals across territories this for me is my joy a time must come fatherhood is not all about growing old it's all about pouring yourself into people and witnessing with all humility the consistency of the truths of God the truths of the kingdom that make men great are finite you can know them it is the pursuit of God that is infinite are you getting what I'm saying the, the keys that you need to piece together like you can get to a final year and your lecturer say you are finished you say I finished what you say you finished the course it doesn't mean you have finished learning but you have safely exhausted all that it takes to be awarded a certificate that can happen in the spirit that you can learn the things you need to know about certain things and God says now your message is clear your priority what keeps you fresh now is not just new revelations but the freshness of his presence that's why in old age you will still be fat and flourishing because you are planted are we together when you listen to Papa Deboe or you listen to Benny Hinn and they talk the truth is that most of what they say will not necessarily be new to you but why do you receive it it comes with a freshness that 45 years of ministry has not eroded are you getting what i'm saying now yes god sees my heart i detest a ministry where only the man of god or the man of god and a few people they are the ones who are prayer warriors they are the ones who are loving god they are the ones who are conforming into his character and then there is a there are the masses of followers as we call them who broke weak don't know god and for many years they remain loyal to that anointing it's not god's way of doing things three years was enough for jesus to build certain people and after that like the foxes of samson he released them he said guys i know you want me to stay but it is expedient that i go because it's time for you to be on the stage too and did they succeed they turned the world upside down i look at a few people who god is helping god is helping all of us but i look at us and our spiritual results i look at our financial results i look at our results of influence and all and I'm telling you, my heart is gladdened. I know. I remain committed to helping you become something that you may not understand now or appreciate. But at the end of your life, I still say it again. You will stand back and watch yourself and say, God, so this is where you are going to take me to. Hallelujah pray in one minute say lord where i have not been attentive to you take away my pride take away that pride give me the grace my 
son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from out of your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart it says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh within me rise let that Deborah let that Milka let that Hannah Rachel within me rise this is why I am here let that man of kingdom influence within me rise it is for your glory it is for your kingdom an heir as long as he's a child differeth not from a slave but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed Lord I will listen hallelujah Tonight I'm going to teach us briefly, just very briefly, just to prepare the ground for the seven days. By the way, please, I don't want you to miss any of these days. Um, my heart is already excited because of what God is going to be doing. Your life will so change it will surprise you. We're going to be sharing mysteries and we're going to be praying one mystery per day that you handle and it just sets you on fire and will pray we're going to have a time of intense prayer praying in the spirit repositioning yourself times of encounters times of restoration of mantles of graces times of opening of new spiritual dimensions yes the prophetic is there but needs to be enlarged the apostolic is there but needs to be enlarged it's true that the healing ministry is there but it needs to be enlarged capacity please don't miss it this is not some activity of men no seven o'clock you are here no matter how long it takes to start just be here anywhere if you there is no space somewhere this is not a koinonia program this is a visitation that god is bringing to the land it will be a time of strange miracles few hours but the impact will linger upon your spirit make sure you fast please fast let the little children fast give them a little time they may not be able to fast six to six but except you are pregnant or under medical supervision then that that's all right but even at that doesn't mean you just eat anything anyhow are we together let your spirit be alive please off off useless movies films just suspend it for a while i beg you they don't have to be wrong all these social media distractions minimize it focus on god focus on god let what will play from your phone and your screens be worship give god one week and let him expand you you can't put new wine in an old wine skin so let god replace the wine skin so that it can take something heavier for the seasons that are coming hallelujah the protocol department will make arrangement will try to see how the buses will be available at least to bring in people and will try to finish on time but it's going to be seven days of fire in this place seven days of the strange move of the spirit epochal revelations of the truth of god's word that if and when you handle them will turn your life around hallelujah don't come alone invite someone Years ago, when I went for an Arbonke crusade, there was no seat. I stood there for six hours. Six solid hours. Because I was hungry 
when you are hungry you don't even see the color of the cloth of your neighbor your eyes are fixed he said if your eye be single your heart will be full of life don't just come to hear come to see you can argue with what you hear but you cannot argue with what you see i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower so that i will see what the lord will say the lord is saying but my eyes are seeing it is what you see that you get not just what you the lord put a strong burden in my heart this night just a few minutes let's talk about it the spirit of wisdom your spirit opens to me the treasures of your world and i will forever sing your praise your spirit i will sing of the wonders of your world i will sing out for joy i will sing of the wonders of your world and i will forever sing James chapter 1 verse 5 forever sing your praise and I will forever sing your praise the Bible says if any of you lack wisdom so the Bible tells us it is possible that a man can lack wisdom it does not stop him from being a human being it is possible to live without the wisdom of god at work in you and he says if any of you lack wisdom the question here before we read on is how do you know you lack wisdom because you only ask when you don't have it but how do i know that i do not have wisdom because remember the bible says every man is right in his own eyes so based on what parameter what parameter do i use to arrive at the conclusion that i am bankrupt of wisdom there is nobody i know on earth with the exception of few people who will admit that they are not wise is that true you try telling somebody who considers himself a gentleman and say i don't think you are exactly wise do you think the person will laugh at you and say wow I'm just learning that. No, you're going to have a big problem. This is it not wise? Me? Am I a madman? Do I look like one? But the Bible says, if any of you realizes that he lacks wisdom. So the first assignment is not to ask. The first assignment is to find out how do you know that the wisdom of God, that the spirit of wisdom is working in your life. Are we together now there must be a system in the kingdom that god has provided to help men understand so i can come to the conclusion because you see as human beings it is very difficult for us to admit that certain things are not working in our lives especially for believers we are people of faith and sometimes we can exaggerate it and admitting the deficiency of certain qualities in our lives it's not natural for men to admit are we together now yes when you tell someone he can't cook say no 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 i can cook what are i mean this is it you are evidently seeing that this meal is not servable and the person is saying i can cook because in his eyes this is a wonderful meal are we together you are seeing a gentleman who is not looking smart and you're saying no 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 you are not dressing smart say, no 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 i mean as far as i'm concerned i'm very very okay so it is difficult i'm explaining to you this this if any man lack wisdom is a very deep process to arrive at a point let me tell you realizing whatever makes you come to a point where you know you do not have wisdom has to be the spirit of god the arrogance of men does not allow for that level of admission we can secretly desire to be wiser 
we can secretly admire individuals who the spirit of wisdom is evidently working in but to outspokenly admit no it's very uncomfortable are we together but the bible says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask who let him ask of god that giveth unto how many men so the manifestation of the wisdom of god in the life of a believer is not privy to certain intelligent people it's not privy to apostles and prophets no the giving of this operation of the spirit is given to all men he says he does so liberally and then an upbraided not and it shall be given that means if i look at your life and i do not see wisdom i am safe to conclude at certain things number one that you have not received and you receive not because you have not asked and you ask not because you have not seen the deficiency in your life are you seeing that now that means if you look at my life and your life and i am bankrupt of the wisdom of god not the wisdom of men that comes to naught the wisdom of God if it is not in my life the Bible says if I ask it should be given so if it is not in my life and God is benevolent it means that I have not genuinely asked and I have not asked because I have not seen the need and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped that means something about my understanding. I have indoctrinated myself into believing that I have sufficient wisdom. Let me tell you the formula that the Bible designed for men to know whether there is wisdom in their lives or not. Wisdom is very vocal. The Bible says wisdom is justified by her children. Wisdom is justified by her children. There are fruits in your life and my life that validate the presence of wisdom. There has to be fruits in your life and my life. There are things I cannot as a human being be sure of whether you have them or not. I leave that to God. Wisdom is not part of those. Because if the wisdom of God is functioning in the life of an individual, it is justified by the results children there talks of the results the proceedings that come from a life that is under the influence of wisdom so how do you know tonight whether or not the wisdom of god and more so the spirit of wisdom is at work very simple look at your results look at your life unbiasedly look at your life unashamedly and then you can come to the conclusion that mm -mm. the repetition of pain the repetition of failure listen carefully the repetition of struggle the repetition of hardship the repetition of the absence of the power the grace the favor of God in your life is a testament that the spirit of wisdom may not be at work in you The spirit of God is at work in you. But that dimension of wisdom may not be at work in you. Are you blessed? Lack of the wisdom of God is what is responsible for the anxiety of men. You know what it means to be anxious? Worrisome. The fear that plagues people, you will always fear until you know what to do and he himself knew what he ought to do the bible took out time to talk about anxiety philippians chapter 4 and when you read from verse 6 to 7 it says be anxious for nothing please give it to us let's let's look at it before we, we talk some more about wisdom it says be the word careful there does not just mean be careless it means be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer we see prayer again you leave that we're going to touch that later but it says be anxious for nothing 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god there is an information that can take away anxiety anxiety let me tell you something it's not proof that satan is around you is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life it's an uncomfortable truth we must admit our world is full of people dying of anxiety where will this come from where will i mean what, no no the pain and fear jesus took half of a whole chapter to talk about worry spoke about the birds of the air that break a spiritual law that is responsible for abundance it says yet your father yet not solomon arrayed in all of his splendor and apparel is like one of these anxiety is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work anxiety stems from uncertainty there is a level of uncertainty that is around our lives financially speaking spiritually speaking so you are about to um, do certain things embark on your life's journey and then because of the gaps of uncertainty you find out that there is worry and anxiety unbelief comes in fear comes in because of fear you become self-centered because you are aware that something about you will fail so you become possessive self-centered angry and all these other elements come in I found a very interesting scripture we're going to read it and then I'll define for you what wisdom is Psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 Psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 are we there read it please one to read ah uh ah -uh. one to read thou through their thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever before me next verse i have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies are my meditation the last verse i understand more than the ancient stop stop don't rush it i understand more than my enemies you made me wiser than my enemies you made me wiser than my teachers and you made me wiser than the ancient and there is a key we're coming there are we together it says thou by thy commandments by thy laws ah, you have made me wiser wiser than my enemies so i can rise wiser than my teachers wiser than the ancient because i have kept your secret psalms 104 verse 24 psalm 104 verse 24 oh lord how manifold are thy works everybody say results i want you to read it just the first line but change works with results ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy results how did the results come about in wisdom thou hast made them all lord i look at your life and it's full of mighty works results and the psalmist was careful to let us know that they did not just happen because you are God it is by engaging wisdom wisdom that these possibilities have been made manifest and the earth is full of your riches which is one of the results that you have produced in wisdom there is a relationship between results and wisdom there is a relationship between riches and wisdom how manifold how multifaceted how awe-inspiring are your works what is wisdom i put a definition here wisdom is possessing 
scriptural solutions scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately what is wisdom knowing what to do and doing it wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it if there is no doing it is not wisdom wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it possessing the scriptural solution there are many solutions there are many ways that seem it right unto a man but the end thereof will justify what way he took so scriptural solutions to life's challenges and then having the possession of those solutions you engage them appropriately you are wise if you do that are we together so you have wisdom to the degree to which we see you preferring scriptural solutions to the challenges that are around your life and others and the results that they produce many people listen to me do not possess this quality and there is an operation of the spirit that can make men to have this quality lavishly that regardless of your age listen carefully regardless of your educational background regardless of what your level of orientation that you can be um you can have a an influence of this dimension of the holy spirit at work in your life and all of a sudden your life opens up wonder after wonder a comprehension of the scriptural solutions listen to me if i ask everyone now write your prayer request and bring it here right now there are people who are going to ask for pages not pieces of papers every one thing that you are writing is in need of an answer is that true the bible says the spirit of wisdom is able to route you in a way and manner that you possess the keys that it takes to turn that request into your testimony and then the fortitude to engage the laws you now know until the results become evident in your life is called wisdom proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 to 9 proverbs chapter 4 please don't trivialize what i'm teaching you tonight wisdom is the principal thing it's using a business terminology now wisdom is the principal thing it says therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding verse 8 exalt her personifies wisdom now exalt her like you would do a lady you love exalt her is that true like you see a man treat his wife that he so loves he says exalt her and there is a reward for exalting her prize her above all else and she shall do what what is responsible for promotion it is true that God is the lifter of men but the dimension of him that lifts men is his wisdom meaning if you are in a position for a long time it's not just an attack from hell but it's a sign that the spirit of wisdom is not at work the spirit of wisdom creates motion in your life it not only creates motion it creates an upgrade to your life it is because of the presence of this possibility that the bible says the path of the just is like the shining light that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day exalt her and she shall promote thee now listen it says she shall bring thee to honor 
he didn't say she shall bring thee honor honor is here it's not just a it's not just an attribute it's a realm of existence that wisdom can like an usher say follow me i will lead you somewhere regardless of your background as a preacher as a businessman as a mother a father wisdom can usher you and whilst you follow her foolishly you will get into a realm the name of that realm is honor not an event it is how you live honor that wisdom can bring a man to honor when thou dost embrace her are we together like Ruth held on to Naomi I'm not leaving you I have seen the value of your presence in my life your God will be my God your people will be my people exalt her and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor this is what people are looking for they are looking for promotion in the spirit they are looking for promotion in finances promotion in influence men of god are struggling trusting god increase in membership increase in whatever this is the formula god gives us and we ignore him and then we keep searching around verse 9 this is what the bible says she shall give to thy head hallelujah an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver who is the she here wisdom wisdom that for embracing wisdom it can veto your background it can veto any other thing in your life brothers and sisters and bring you to this possibility this is the realm that we all desire to get there and the bible tells you that the way to get there is wisdom are we together yes the bible says through wisdom a house is built a house is built not through desire through desire the intention to build is there but the actual building is through wisdom this ministry brothers and sisters you see was built and is being maintained by wisdom every great man and woman you acknowledge around the world every great enterprise that you see and admire everyone who has come to a position of influence in the kingdom has done so by the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom years ago i was listening to pat robertson the founder of cbn 700 club and he said as a young man when he was about to start ministry he said he went to the lord he said lord i'm a young man about to start give me three things number one he said give me wisdom number two he said give me favor number three he said give me the anointing of the spirit ah, i went back to god too and i said lord thank god i'm still young number one give me wisdom boy i stayed there before moving to favor because i knew that that wisdom I, I, my life was so bankrupt of it how else would i have gotten it our society is full of unwise people it's not an insult it's a description they are sincere people but their decisions and their results are very clear that the wisdom of god of god not sophia not human wisdom we're talking of a dimension of wisdom here that has nothing to do with age and not necessarily education and all of that the wisdom of god the faculty to produce result as god at god's level the spirit of wisdom deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9 the reason why joshua excelled was not just that he was anointed joshua always had the anointing the anointing was there but the bible says and joshua the son of Nun, was full of what the spirit of wisdom he was already full of the spirit and yet moses was told to lay hands on him how do you lay hands on someone who is already filled with the spirit and joshua the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom not full of wisdom full of the spirit of wisdom for moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of israel hearkened unto him 
and he did as the Lord commanded Moses Joshua full of the spirit of wisdom Joshua full of the spirit of wisdom no wonder when Moses died there was nothing much for God to tell him again he said Moses my servant is dead Joshua my only encouragement is for you to be strong you already have the spirit of wisdom mm. you have it just be strong you are a young man and I know that leading these people is difficult but there is a spirit in you you will lead them in a way that will make you a wonder leadership is by the spirit of wisdom let me tell you this listen any man on earth listen to me carefully any man on earth and in the kingdom that multitudes are listening to him respect him human beings are not stupid are you hearing what i'm saying you can have a crowd of foolish people but there is a level to which there is there is a level to which human beings will not be more foolish than that jesus went up the mountain and a crowd followed him there was something he was telling them there was something contained in his teachings i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise not knowledgeable hidden is a principle that can bring solutions to your pain ah. there are families that if they knew this weeping will stop it's true there are individuals that if they know this weeping will stop he said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and the elder tapped me and said weep not the book can be opened when the book is open then tears i look at times in my life when i was so bankrupt of certain dimensions of wisdom and i looked at the tears that came from my eyes but no more his wisdom has come hmm. i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy i will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise and for preachers we need this so much you know most times we don't start ministry with wisdom we start ministry with passion passion and then your passion leads you to spiritual activities that bring certain dimensions of the anointing and then while the ministry starts going at a point you hook in one place still anointed but wisdom you can't move further because the promoter is wisdom the exalter is wisdom the one who brings you to the realm of honor is wisdom herein lies the answer to the dilemma we see that gifted people still don't rise because to be gifted and to be wise are two different things you can be full of so much anointing and yet live an unrewarded life and yet not be able to rise in the spirit but god is changing someone's story in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i have watched people do you know um sometimes i sit down and i look at people truly speaking when i look at people i fight tears because i know what they are doing wrong i don't fight tears because of their situation i know i fight tears because i can explain why their lives are that way i have seen well-meaning lovely men and women of god that i love and honor with all my heart but I look at their lives the same way my life was and I know where they are missing it please no result is a mistake please learn this you may not understand what is being engaged but there is something being engaged to produce that outcome you may not understand what is being engaged but there is something being engaged a man does not just become powerful no no 
A man does not just last in ministry. A man does not just become anointed. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. The fact that you don't know what is being done does not mean something is not being done. Your miracle is when the solution comes and when the grace to apply it is released. Then you know that challenge has come to an end. Isaiah 11 tells us there is a real spirit of wisdom, verse 2. That the Holy Spirit can manifest in a man as wisdom. Notice that even for the building of the tabernacle and in the Lord's house, God did not allow people to be involved carelessly. The spirit of wisdom had to come upon them to produce God's desired results. If the spirit of wisdom comes upon your ministry, your ministry will change in a way not just from human terms you will find out that the possibilities that only God can produce is what happens in your life years ago I'm not a social media person but the Lord spoke to me revealing the strategy for the next level of ministry and this is what the Lord told me I said Lord how will your word get to people and all of that yes we're going to have a tv ministry but that's for another time but how is it going to happen and this is what the lord told me at that time they sell messages you don't upload messages online and the lord said this is the strategy don't sell any message let the messages be packaged and put it online i will give it wings to the ends of the earth the wisdom of god it never made sense then what is this who has the time to download heavy mbs of an audio not video people are not, i mean when somebody can buy a cd and slot it who do you think you are but when his wisdom comes in something that looks so foolish go around jericho seven times just go around it has never been done oh god just go around and at the seventh time that act of wisdom crashes down Jericho. Brothers and sisters, that one act till today, this ministry will never recover from it. That one act in obedience to the spirit of wisdom. That's it. Mm. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. The spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for being able to afford the bills of ministry please hear me there is no ministry except you want to manipulate people don't be angry at men of god that you see manipulating people for let me tell you you are doing ministry and you want to work in financial integrity and still work in financial abundance you've got to receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom otherwise it will wear your grace out you will cry one day to death You need it in your life. There are many Christian homes that is very clear the spirit of wisdom is not there. The decisions are always leading to pain. The decisions are always leading to retrogression. Remember I told you that wisdom is justified by her children. So if I claim the spirit of wisdom is in my life and everything I do is moving me back, I should check something is wrong. Something is wrong. There are men of God who are going back and back and back. There are individuals going back. They are better yesterday than they are today. No matter what kind of prayer you pray for them. I've seen individuals that I didn't see for a long time. And you look at them and their lives are a tragedy. They are still serving the Lord. That's the painful part. They never, they, they didn't backslide. Still passionate. And you say, why is your life like this? Are these your children? Yes, sir. Why are they like this? Man of God, God is faithful. No, sir. Don't, don't, don't. That does not look like faithfulness. Is God challenging us? Some of our parents are pastors. They've been pastors for many years. I'm not talking about finances. No growth. There is no day that the ministry breaks through that you can say sinners have been saved. Lives have been transformed. Pain after pain. Let me tell you, repetition of pain is a sign that you need the spirit of wisdom. 
it is the principal thing the bible says it is the principal thing there are ministries that rise and fall they rise to a level they are doing so well and then at a point you find out that things start to nose dive no scandal no nothing just they have exhausted the level of wisdom that can take them beyond that level and they come down the scriptural solution to life's problem and the fortitude to engage it appropriately is called wisdom standing let me use someone come come show standing between this gentleman and his destiny whether it is spiritually speaking whether it is financially speaking the obstacle other forces are there like favor and the rest but it is wisdom that tells you what to do for other forces you know why the bible says it is the principal thing because all other forces depend on it it is when you engage the truths that are received from heaven that other forces now start coming into play the anointing this and that it is wisdom that shows you what to do for the anointing to be multiplied in your life it is wisdom that tells you what to do for favor to be activated it is wisdom that tells you what to do for restoration to come all other manifestations are dependent on wisdom so in the interim there are many other forces but the principal force wisdom are we together so i do not i know that i should get there i know that if favor comes i will arrive there i know that there is a way i can be healed i know that there is a way the prophetic gift can be multiplied but what is that way what is that way and how do i engage it it is the spirit of wisdom that has brought forth these seven days of divine visitation because there is something that you can engage that will bring other things and then the spirit of wisdom comes i can show you a man that is carrying the spirit of wisdom his results her results it is true wisdom is justified by her children if you accept this thing tonight then we can finish up that verse if any of you lack results if any of you lack results if you lack results you lack wisdom if any of you lack results if your spiritual life lacks potency if your finances lack potency if your influence and your leadership and whatever it is that you're involved in lacks potency no promotion no growth nobody desires your grace you are living an unrewarded life spiritually and otherwise it says that if you lack this it's a sign that the wisdom of god is not at work in you hallelujah let me share with you very briefly how the spirit of wisdom works this is the core of what i'm teaching tonight most people are aware we've taught several teachings on the holy spirit and we've taught on wisdom you can make reference to my teaching what wisdom is this but the operation how it works is where i think that most people have not been able to access it Mm. how is the spirit of wisdom how does it operate how do i activate the spirit of wisdom so that it produces for me ready let's finish up the scripture james chapter 1 and verse 5 james chapter 1 verse 5 there is wisdom in the name of Jesus. There is wisdom in the name of Jesus. If, if any one of you lack results, which is a product of lack of wisdom, what's the first thing? Let him ask. You have not because 
you ask not. Not because God is unable to give it. Let him ask. Let him ask. Let him pray. Let him raise up a petition from a desperate heart that when I begin to pray, my prayer not only brings the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom, but also activates its operation. If prayer can bring wisdom, then prayer can make it work too. Are we together now? Yes. Let him pray. I can know a man functioning under the influence of the spirit of God by the results that come from his prayer. Not just his prayer. I need to see the results that come from your prayer. The reason why many ministries have poor prayer meetings is because over time people have concluded that prayer does not work. They cannot see the results from it. Do you know that praying in the spirit captures something the Bible calls the hidden wisdom of God that the princes of this world did not know. It says for if they had known this they would not crucify the Lord of glory. There was something Paul was doing while he was praying and praying in the spirit that began to grant him access. Prayer activates the operation of the spirit of wisdom. Not just bringing the anointing in your life. The functionality, the operation of the spirit of wisdom is released as you pray. While they prayed, they didn't know what to do. How do we advance the gospel across this territory? They prayed and they fasted and the spirit of wisdom came. Separate me Paul and Barnabas. This is a strategy. They stood before Jericho. Listen, when you know that the spirit of wisdom is with you, you will never fear. When you see challenges, all you need to know is to wait till the answer comes. Many of us never wait. We go ahead and say, let the answer follow me. And we call it faith and it damages us into pieces. May never live to have a second chance. When Joshua got before Jericho, the Bible says the fence of Jericho could host five chariots fortified tooth and nail to a point that a prostitute could comfortably live in the fence the fence of Jericho was like CGC how do you penetrate the place do you shoot is it an arrow is it a gun do you jump the spirit of wisdom he said don't worry they circumcised themselves and set their heart apart and an angel just came and reveal the strategy do this do that and the Lord spoke the spirit of wisdom go around the city seven times and on the seventh day go around seven times the spirit of wisdom many of the things that we call prophecy is prophecy yes but what was uttered is the wisdom of God go and bath seven times Go and bath seven times. It is the solution not to all problems, to your problem. Meaning someone else will do it, not directed by God and not get any solution. You see that? The spirit of wisdom is God's customized solution for your challenges. It's not generic. It's personal. That's why I said it is not, it is not the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of the world is, is universal in application. Like you say, if someone is hungry, eat. God can tell you if you are hungry, dance. Now, that does not make sense. But that is his solution for you. Go and bath seven times. And the guy felt insulted. Habba. I'm a captain of the Syrian army. And he went to bath. The seventh time, the Bible says his skin became fresh. You see, let me tell you, this is the mystery behind people doing what does not make sense and still getting results. They are not making sense is that they are doing it as directed. The spirit of wisdom came. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. This is the fountain of wisdom. Mary knew she did. They would have said, Ah, Jesus, look, 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 look. The, the person who sells this wine is here. He can tell you. Jews were not foolish people, they knew how to crush wine for kings. Whatever he tells you, do. Notice that no single miracle of Jesus was repeated twice. 
the results were repeated many times but the manifestation of wisdom brought a unique solution for every issue at a certain time he spat on the ground and put in someone's eyes at a certain time he did something else look at him but we keep repeating the same thing and we just faith comes by hearing hearing what the wisdom of god when his wisdom comes to you then you get up and do what he told you to do then your life becomes a wonder lord where are we going to get the venue for this meeting i saw in my visions overflow lord i can active your venue. i can use my brain to look at several venues which venue in zaria will contain the crowds you are showing me just keep praying cgc the spirit of wisdom see that as at the time the lord spoke the building had not even been expanded this when the spirit of wisdom speaks don't doubt you can walk on water and every other person who is walking sings except you because the spirit of wisdom is the dimension of the holy spirit that will ensure that what you see this is what makes the life of certain people look miraculous you are doing the same thing but they come and do it and get strange results because they don't do it as desired they wait faith waits until wisdom speaks you don't just act carelessly just because you know. No. Wisdom is manifested in prayer. When we pray, the spirit of wisdom begins to speak. Learn this. Most of us, we are so distracted in our prayer that we do not hear the communications of the spirit of wisdom. Lord, what is the way out to this predicament and challenge in my life? And the Lord says, pray. And we pray after five minutes we say god you are not speaking please good night and we just we cheat ourselves there you don't pray as long as you want you pray till the answer comes it's not the issue of 10 minutes or one hour it is when it comes there is an object to your prayer and you begin to pray when 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 cgc became full and the overflows became full it was obvious that when there was a program here there was no other venue that could take us lord what is going to be the way out of this when you know this you know that there's nothing called impossible impossible is the name given to the state before the arrival of the wisdom of god when the wisdom of god comes it will turn a mountain i tell you into a level plain ground is god speaking to you hmm. And all of a sudden, I was praying one time. And the Lord said, because of this, every time Friday night is not available, Sunday night will be available. As simple as it is, that ended the issue of trying to look for all of these things. Lord, the overflows are full now to the roadside. What do we do next? By his wisdom, God was able to profess solution. And we're able to host people. Overflow three is bigger than overflow one, two, and three and i mean overflow one and two together the wisdom of god you see you never see how it would have happened until wisdom creates the way then you look and say ah, why didn't i think about it because your small brain cannot think about it my brother you need the wisdom of god joseph after he finished interpreting the dream then the spirit of wisdom came hear the spirit of wisdom speaking let pharaoh find a man who is discreet and wise and appoint him over this and that when there was problem and the people were arguing and it was almost killing moses moses could not do his work because there were so many people and god told him mr man you are going to kill yourself let the spirit of wisdom guide you set men thousands and hundreds and fifties and then appoint elders to take care of them then you just play supervisory roles ah, and moses found rest he would have died and said it's the will of god how many pastors die because they love god but there is no manifestation of the spirit of wisdom to guide the affairs 
by the grace of God, one of the principles that help in my being efficient in ministry is the fact that by his wisdom, we have created a robust leadership structure that allows me to focus on the ministry of word and prayer. I don't have to come here in the afternoon to check to say, ah, I hope these people did their duty. Through wisdom, a house is built. It's God speaking to us. Everybody say prayer. prayer. Shout it, prayer. That means if the devil attacks your prayer life, what is he attacking? He's attacking the arrival of a scriptural solution that brings testimonies for you. When you set yourself apart to pray and the devil said it does not matter, among other things, he's robbing you of access to the wisdom of God. Say, I will pray. Shout it, say, I will pray. Men who pray, access the wisdom of God they come up from their prayer life with very strange solutions very very strange solutions sometimes solutions that don't make sense do not do not downplay on a leader that knows how to get wisdom through prayer when you say we have come to our wit's end then you see another dimension of grace and wisdom number two how is wisdom activated Wisdom is activated through meditation. Meditation. Noisy people, sorry for you. This is where the devil cheats us. We live in a noisy society. If you are not making noise, your phone is making noise. If your phone is not making noise, the television is making noise. If the television is not making noise, the well-wishers around your house are making noise. Our lives are full of noise that cheats us. There is a dimension of wisdom that only silence can bring. Meditation. Great leaders meditate. You sit down. Thank you. There's got to be a way out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you sit quietly. Do you know sometimes I do this from morning till night. Meditating like a fool. Sometimes I just kneel down in front of my chair and put my head down. I'm waiting waiting and the answer will never come till sometimes late in the night the spirit of wisdom comes majestically doesn't come in a rush and foolishly and carelessly if you don't have patience forget about it because you will not come sometimes you finish all of those things you are praying in the night you just wake up to stretch a little and fire falls from heaven and you sit down this is it this is it It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Is the wisdom of God working in your life? Oh, I fell down the other day when you said receive wisdom. Do you meditate? No, sir. Then the spirit of wisdom may be there, but you are not aligning sufficiently that's why many men of god don't have messages to preach because they write a list of messages and preach one by one and they finish the 35th one and the year is not even up to half the year is not halfway gone and you wonder what do i do inspiration comes in the place of meditation never forget what does it mean to meditate to ponder ponder not just on anything to ponder on truth ponder on the word of God not just to mutter but to ponder to think it's called imagination it's not like imagination it is called imagination the creation of images by the spirit ah. Genesis 11 before Nimrod began to build he called the people and they began to meditate meditation is not just sitting down under a tree that's a wonderful um, um what they call it a wonderful way of stimulating meditation but meditation is where your mind is called to a point where it is stimulated to begin to create creativity is a product of meditation let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom works the spirit of wisdom is a creative spirit is the first dimension of the holy spirit we see in genesis chapter one creation the spirit of wisdom creates it creates solutions 
See, what I'm teaching you is, is, is a jackpot to your success in life if you understand it. Creation. The solution to every problem you seek already exists in Christ. But there is a system of transporting it from the realm of the spirit. It is called creation. It is called the power of imagination. Where you give the Holy Spirit your mind like a woman's womb and you allow him to brood upon it. That's what happens in meditation. You offer like a wife gives her womb over to her husband to be implanted with a seed. That's what happens. Many of us are not creators. Creation is not just by speaking. It is out of the abundance of the heart. When that incubation has happened, then your speaking is among the process that makes it manifest. Not many people will teach you this thing I'm teaching you. The spirit of wisdom will make your life a wonder if you know how it works. Watch Jesus. This woman was caught in adultery. The very act of it. This is a kind of question where both yes and no would chain you. And Jesus kept quiet and was writing the spirit of wisdom. Immediately the spirit of wisdom landed. Then he spoke. He who does not have sin should cast the first stone. And then the Bible says his speech affected the oldest first. You see, you see how powerful wisdom is? Because the youngest can drop it and the oldest will say, are you, are you stupid? Pick that stone. Then he started with the oldest. If the oldest has dropped the stone, what do you do as the youngest? The miracle is not in dropping the stone. It's who dropped it first. The oldest dropped it down to the last person. Woman, where are your accusers? Go. Neither do I condemn you. This is the spirit of wisdom. It is the spirit of wisdom that suggested the strategy for the salvation of men. Mm. That instead of everybody dying, let's make a caricature out of Satan. It's called the hidden wisdom. Let one man come and let the whole world enter in him. Then let him die. So that one man came and Satan kept looking for him. At a point, the Holy Ghost restrained his hand and Satan began to prevail. And Satan manipulated men to kill Jesus. And he ran to hell. He said, demons, did you watch what happened? I can't believe it. I killed Jesus. And to his shock, he saw Jesus in hell. And he said, no, this is a joke. You can't be in hell. Say, yes, I'm here. Because when you kill sinners, they go to hell. And so I died sin. And here I am in hell. Give me the keys. <sighs> Give me the keys. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. And when the keys were given to him, he dislodged principalities and powers, made a public show of them. And then he not only resurrected, he resurrected with many who had died. They were in the streets of Jerusalem. Everybody saw him. And he said, guys, this is it. You will, um, you will go to heaven, but I have to be the firstborn among the resurrected. So let me go to heaven quickly. I'll come back and then you guys will go. And he went to heaven, poured his blood according to Hebrews in the tabernacle, became the high priest, and then he returned. The guys went and he went to the disciples. All hail, I'm back. All power in heaven. He disarmed Satan not through power, through wisdom. Are we together? Listen, let me teach you something. I walk in the anointing. Many results are not dependent on power, force. Wisdom is really what brings dominion. Because the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. You engage through knowledge. Not just by trying to force things. It's the ministry of the angels to do that. They are the enforcers of the word of God. They confirm the word of the servant. But wisdom is solution. That's why sometimes you see me ministering to people and you see me doing stupid things. I can hold somebody's hand and the Holy Spirit can say, let that person shout Jesus. And the person just shout Jesus and then the person is falling. And you are watching. Me too, I'm watching. I'm as shocked as you. We are all watching the wisdom of the Spirit. You will now 
get the formula and run to one small meeting and hold somebody's hand and tell the person to shout Jesus and the person shouts and looks at you say I've done it say do it again because it was just copying this is one of the big mistake of we young ministers we copy acts without the spirit that brought them are we together yes meditation this is where many of us have missed it that you sit before the lord what's that song brooding over every darkness you are called listen light to shine from dark how can light come out of darkness that's what the bible said he said god who has commanded light to come out of darkness that means the answer is right there with you in your chaos the light the raw material sit down in that situation and meditate and let creation begin to happen when you plant corn the ugliness of the soil and it is still where the new shoot comes out of it's a principle he's brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine in darkness you are brooding over all my darkness you are causing light to shine from darkness so in the midst of that financial hardship sit down there that's when creation happens you're not going to run away from the challenge and get a solution somewhere sit in it by the rivers of babylon in the midst of the captivity i sat down there and a vision was open to me we run away from challenges the miracle is right there sit down there's got to be a way lord my wife you no know, i prayed on there's got to be a way and all of a sudden you allow him to impregnate your mind ha. brothers and sisters i can tell you this your life will be a wonder first to you if you practice this it will be as if you are holding a charm or a genie somewhere that you are winding many of us don't sit down jobless people don't sit down to allow creation happen they just loiter around sir can you give me a job and god is saying i want to speak to you no oh god I'm, I'm, i mean I'm, I'm, i want to marry they said I, I can't marry because i don't have a job me i want to and god says sit down now if we can take half the time we spend loitering around to sit down not worrying just find the back of one tree in the night and sit down when other people are snoring their destinies you sit quietly there's got to be a way to my life lord everything is not working nine prayer requests since last year nine of them not answered you are not a liar jesus speak to me and you are just playing you know i told i get who did i give an assignment was it us or school of ministry students no sometimes i don't know the difference but do it still do it go and play worship you don't just sit down and beds are just making noise worship doesn't distract you it steals your spirit and then you sit down sometimes for hours the flesh will never allow you sit down this flesh you see once you sit down you just start thinking ah oh, but that lady is really beautiful you see don't stop still sit down there okay, but my father do you know to be honest do you know that i didn't have a good upbringing don't worry this is the flesh trying to distract something a time will come your flesh will be frustrated it will give up it's one of the benefits of fasting the flesh is empowered by the health of your body it takes advantage of food so when when food is minimal it it alters the interruption of the flesh yes sir it does ultimately leading to boosting your faith but that's how it works and you sit down lord there has to be a way and the lord sits down and says but you know you have hundred thousand and then in scripture just opens up and now this is god the spirit of wisdom coming to you now and looks at it and says except a corn falls in the ground and the lord can speak to you and say that hundred thousand that is your last money i'm not saying do it 
go and sow it you are not doing donation just thinking about it and you carry yourself as if you are going to go and die and sow it somewhere the moment you do that the same spirit that spoke to you now goes to your uncle who doesn't like you and say remember i've been telling you you will bless somebody it's time now it's janet it's this person and then your uncle calls you wisdom justified by her children and you are surprised and god says keep trusting me like this for your life and then you sit down and you find out let me tell you how god forces the spirit of wisdom to work in you sometimes he will close the door of any physical help in your life pain is a very good way of activating wisdom some of us until you go through certain levels of pain wisdom will never work in your life it's not all pain that is demonic hear what i'm telling you you always receive hundred hundred thousand from your father so every time you are saying the wisdom of god you say yes but what you are mean is the money is coming and then your father says well um i had a dream and i didn't see myself giving you money for five months so what are you saying say exactly that um a voice spoke to me and that's the voice that has been speaking to me that i got rich that you are benefiting from the same voice said i should leave you alone you may insult and get angry but after two weeks you sit down and in your anger you frown you frown you frown and then you just open a scripture anyhow lord help me and then you just see takes you to the story of the widow in zarephath what did she do you have been reading it because your stomach is full now you read it with your stomach empty then child thy light break forth and you see something you never saw ah god commanded a woman but she was not aware she was commanded but the bible says god already commanded her could it could it be that there was something she was not receiving because God told Elijah, I've commanded her. Whether she, the, the message arrived to her or not, is another thing. But me, I've commanded her. But when Elijah arrived, it didn't look like she was aware. I expect her to say, oh, you are the one. You're welcome. Come in. I mean, the loaf is there. The man said, I'm about to die. She would have died not hearing the command or seeing the prophet. The same way God would say, I've answered this person. And you look at the person's life and the answer is not yet there. I meditate a lot creation happens in my life through meditation I have explored the power of imagination this is not some zodiac Scientology metaphysical thing this is a principle listen to the advice that God gave Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 let's attempt to round up he said this book of the law please give it to us shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate. I thought I was, do you know, I literally was seeing it. <laughs> Truly speaking, <laughs> you guys are delaying. Okay, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. Listen, but thou shalt meditate therein. Meditate therein. Not meditate any other place. You don't meditate on what you want. You meditate on the word of God not just look at a newspaper and say hi again Boko Haram. and you are looking and you are thinking about a solution for your church it won't come that way are we together thou shall meditate there in day and night when you meditate an information will come from it then you observe to do and then your way becomes prosperous you don't act first you sit down and allow the creative force of god's wisdom come to your life lord my wedding is five months all we have is hundred thousand the budget is 2.5 there's got to be a way out not hi god you sent me mm, jesus talk to me my spirit is open i silence every voice of fear silence them first i silence every wicked voice that wants to make God look unfaithful in my life. Lord, you are faithful. And you are sitting down. And the spirit of wisdom begins to move. The spirit of wisdom can tell you to do anything. It can just say, call one person. And you call the person. 
and he says i'm going to do a transfer you will think it's hundred thousand you will see three million and god says now it has come go and marry your wife and other people will see you and say you that i know Abba, my brother and you you will quietly go back and give god glory ah god wisdom has covered for me that's why you see some people whose testimony should be like your own based on the physical parameters you see but their testimonies are a thousand times greater than yours wisdom bail them out someone needs to receive this wisdom tonight because the depending on men forever let god send them remember i told you all blessings come from god through men to you but when you begin to depend on men depending on men is addictive it's addictive those men can even be your father and your mother many of us who have all this right conscious mentality my father you are the one that gave birth to me you are 40 years you are still saying it and god may not cause what is happening in your family but you will see it as a ready tool and push you out and then you sit down and then you worry and call it meditation and god says no worrying i've stopped you from doing that but you sit down and you meditate let me admit to you that you will not meditate one night and get the solution no i wish it were so sometimes it can happen but that's just god's mercy helping you to encourage you so that the day that it doesn't come with the speed you want you will know god has been faithful and you will stay there are people who stay for weeks weeks turn to months every multi-millionaire knows this thing i'm telling you that their results is not just based on what they do but based on the reality that has been altered in their minds and their perceptions it is true way before god blessed this ministry with these crowds i had captured it it's there do you believe what i've taught you tonight my my prayer for you is not just that you finish a service today and say wow nice <clears throat> but that you go and sit down and say lord i know i'm a prayer warrior but there is no time in silence to sit quietly wake up in the night and think lord what is the next key what is the next step there are bills before me what is the next step this is the dimension we must step into as a ministry there has to be a way out don't say there is no way don't join satan saying there is no way is calling god a liar you open scripture no there is a way ah. light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light my light have taught you is the secret for the hand of God upon your life financially you will sit down and do business after business and business after business and be shocked that the result will be the same because out of the abundance of the heart what have you incubated in your spirit and your mind it's not about doing things you tell people these things they never listen because most people think men of god know nothing about finances and people run around looking for all kinds of give me money let me do this and god says one thing is needful settle down first apostle what do you think i can do to prosper sit down no i my blood my blood is hot calm down and one the breath of the spirit will just light that bulb and you stand up circumspectly and with little effort the lord will create a wonder out of your life hear what i'm saying write the challenges let me give you an assignment go and write out all the challenges that you are trusting god for and sit with a clean sheet of paper in your bible and worship and just keep looking at them 
let me teach you this in conclusion. Can I, can I, am I free to teach you? Look at me. <laughs> Pray in tongues for one minute. Pray in tongues for one minute. Labaka sude bilahasiana kataboshi. Let me Light me love. Light me love. Light me love. Like a candle. Light me love. Light me love. Light me love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something. Jesus was teaching and he said the eye is the light of the body. Listen carefully. Please, please listen. The eye is the light of the body. Do you know what Jesus was saying? I hope you know Jesus was not teaching a parable. Go and Google the parables of Jesus. You don't see that story as a parable. He was giving something. He was teaching a powerful principle that the eye these two objects you see in front of your face that there is a mystery seeing is only one of the functions and it's simply because that's all science told you there is a system of transporting realities to and from the realm of the spirit that only your eyes that's why god healed every blind person he saw there was no blind person that passed jesus that was not healed there were other cripples that he left them but he was violent on blindness there is a relationship between your eyes and your destiny listen paul became blinded by the glory of god but god had to open his spiritual eyes to be seen first before the physical one opened do you know why your eye closes in the night when you sleep light me lord light my life light my destiny brothers and sisters there are secrets in this book when you find it your results are not just an issue of wish these eyes you see let me tell you what happens anything the eye makes contact with consistently the mind the mind listen to me carefully what your eyes makes contact with it forces your mind to begin to think on that reality now watch this it is not the thinking about it it is an incubation that starts happening in the realm of the spirit now the holy ghost knows the solution are we together now you meditate not just by closing your eyes alone because sometimes you close the physical eyes but you are still seeing are we together now and so that's the reason why you pray well in the night because there are few distractions your eye is seeing but you just see black and white this color sometimes can create noise it is an enemy to meditation Are we together go and close a room and sit quietly and play worship and see what happens to you where you are not seeing the speaker never took light and you are using your phone to worship and you pray they don't bring light because it's doing something to you this eye is a transmitter the same way you have a radio wave watch this not just your ears this eye the creation of a radio wave is in the similitude of the way God designed men to walk. That you lift an antenna and it starts receiving the before you. The goal is to get that sound to your radio. Is that true? But you lift up something. That something is your eyes. That when you begin to make contact with the word of God. I don't mean reading it. Just looking open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things what did david know so you are making contact and all of a sudden let me tell you what will happen very soon 
your eyes will stop seeing you are looking but you are no longer seeing your mind is what takes over have you seen that happen that you are reading something and for hours you keep reading the same line you can't move forward that's because something more superior than your reading is distracting you in that case worrying the eyes then your ears these things are great i'm showing you notice that you have a selection of songs in your phone or whatever you never sit down particularly to hear them but after hearing them five or six times you know the next song and you can sing along if they ask you to sing it on your own now you can't sing but once they play it you can follow it and sing these are systems the eyes is a very deep and dangerous mystery yes he told the man at get beautiful look at us use your eyes i'm about to talk to you i thought you said give me your ears he said look at us steadfastly and he looked at them and he said now you are seeing what was the requirement of elijah receiving from elijah not if you can hear me if you can was he not looking at him this is your bible i'm not reading an occult book this is your bible when jesus was le was levitating to heaven the bible says they kept looking at him their eyes stayed on him until the clouds received him and something happened to them could it be that the only thing you have been doing with your eyes is to just look around no that's why you don't remember the faces of blind people because you cannot see their eyes the 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 part that makes your face recognizable is your eyes Let's pray. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my life. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore, get wisdom. The Bible says, doth not wisdom cry. It personifies wisdom. That wisdom is calling on people and say, please, don't attempt to live without me. When the Lord was creating the heavens and the earth, the spirit of wisdom was there. Your life cannot be created without it. The manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for delivering the secrets of the kingdom. Without wisdom, revelation is not even possible. The spirit of wisdom will grant you access to scriptural solutions. Brothers and sisters, you will watch mountains before you crash. And people look at you and say, what wisdom is this? There is a relationship between mighty works and wisdom. Every time you see mighty works, strange results at the back of it is a scriptural solution. It's a mystery that was unveiled. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands and pray against the spirit of death upon this man. Because I'm seeing the spirit of death. I'm seeing the spirit of death. We challenge this spirit, oh God. We challenge this spirit, oh God. Go! You will not die. I curse the spirit of death. I curse the spirit of death. I minister life to you. Life, life, life. I'm praying for you. I command breakthrough into your life, madam. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has died in your life, I command you to come alive right now. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me another woman. I'm seeing you are from Benway State. Benway State. I'm seeing a woman from Benway. 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 Please, if there's someone like that, let's just. Hallelujah. Benway State. There's someone here. You came to stand for someone with breast cancer. Cancer is cancer of the breast. Who is that? You came to stand in for someone. You are the one? You are the one? Yes, sir. My cousin. Your cousin. Yes. Breast cancer. Yes, sir. Because this thing has gone serious. Yes, sir. And it's only the power of God. Yes, sir. Otherwise, they are going to cut off the breast. Yes, sir. That's what the doctors have said. Yes, sir. But tonight, there is a name that is above every other name. There is a name. There is a name. There is a name. Hold my hands. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we curse that spirit right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm seeing you wearing an atlas shoes. God is bringing advancement and speed into your life. I'm seeing you wearing the shoes of an athlete because you are going to run. God is going to visit you in a very mighty way. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Breast cancer. Father, let there be perfection. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her come. Let her come. I know. It's not even I want to talk about it. Your mother. Where is your mother? My mother. She's at home. She's at home. God is going to visit your mother in a very mighty way. Amen. God is, I'm seeing increase coming. It looks like a promotion or something is coming for your mom. And I'm seeing God visiting your family's finance in a very mighty way. Amen. I'm seeing a ring in your hand. Are you married? You are married. Yes. Where's your husband? He's, He's seated there. Please come, husband. I, I'm not sure I know you. Come, because God wants to speak a word to the family. Sir, the Lord God of Israel Amen. is going to visit your family in the next three months. Amen. You will see dramatic things. Amen. There are things that I may not say in, in the open now, but I see a miracle coming. I see a miracle coming. Um, how long have you been married, sir? I'm hearing a cry of a baby. Amen. And it's a baby girl. A baby girl it's a baby girl this will happen by the spirit of god this will happen by the grace of god Amen. please lay your hands on your stomach thank you jesus christ i curse everything that is not of god in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing you buying a new car i'm seeing you buying a new car god is showing me you are buying a new car. It's a Toyota car. It's a Toyota car. You will see God do it by the hand of God. And God is also bringing you. Um, I'm seeing God bringing men to help you, even financially. Because this is one of the things that you really desire. Amen. God is bringing men to help you financially. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, let Amen. this be so. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, before I pray for the sick, did I pray for her? From Benway State. Mama, come. Do you have a daughter, ma? Yes. This is the daughter. I need to pray for you. Just leave your mother and hold my hands. We need to pray for you so that you will not have a child before marriage. Huh? we need to pray for you Amen. there is a spirit in the family and we have to pray because even you as you are like this it's not like you don't love God but you need to settle down otherwise men, men cause a lot of problems and it's not like you're a bad girl it's a spirit Father in the name of Jesus Christ I set her free 
from every yoke of darkness let her go now go mama may god bless you i open a new chapter for your life and i declare in the name of jesus that everything that has caused you pain my god is visiting you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as we sing that song there's power in the name of jesus all the people that came here for healing please just come and arrange yourself everybody keep praying in tongues and say father visit me god is visiting people inside and outside please be orderly let's do it very fast there's power in the name of jesus there is power if you came with anybody's picture you can also hold it there is power it's called a miracle service it's not just a name it's an experience to break every chain of darkness no matter if there's no space just now as we pray for others then they will give way one more time. There is power. how long it has been hallelujah i'm going to lay my hands upon you and pray listen some of you are coming in for sickness but what is the, the root cause of all of this is is that is the same root cause that is affecting finance affecting marriage god is not just going to heal you hallelujah god is going to address the root cause hallelujah so as i pray for you i want you to march down to your seat whatever you could not do make sure you begin to do it hallelujah i already sense the fire of the holy ghost upon my hands very strong and all of us who are standing god is touching people inside and outside be focused don't be distracted by the way if you have not written your prayer request now is the opportunity to take advantage of it hallelujah father we thank you let there be such a move of the healing power of jesus that as these hands are laid stretch forth your right hand oh god and let your people be healed in the name of jesus
Who brought this woman? Okay, please don't cry. No. Uh, about 30 years now. Tonight is your night of liberty. Uh, uh, I hear the chains falling. Jesus. Uh, I cast this spirit chains out. Falling. Out. Uh, I command that devil of death. Uh, Leave this body Fall now away. by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. I hear the chain falling down. I hear the chain falling down. I hear the chain falling down. Pain in your there was pain in your leg, but now is there pain? It does. Do it, check yourself. It does. Yes. And it's like your stomach used to feel strong. Yes. And, and then you feel something moving like a snake. Check it now. Check it now. Squeeze yourself. Father. Jesus, Father, thank you. There's nothing. I'm not feeling anything. Everything has gone. This was a spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are here. Come on, celebrate yeah. Jesus, people. Go! 
some of you if, if we keep asking one by one it doesn't matter what it is hallelujah go ahead watch it i believe i believe lord i believe lord Five years of ulcer, you'll be healed, right? And discharging. Hey, don't worry. God will set you free. That devil is a liar in the name of Jesus.
Kanye, 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 Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. 
miracles everywhere miracles everywhere and right now right now miracles everywhere Please make sure you are praying. Don't think God is just touching the people here. There is something the atmosphere is doing. Let's just finish the prayer for this.
a lion in the spirit. This guy has a wild spirit. When he's angry, he can kill. And it's not his fault. This is, this is an ancestral thing. See how many people trying to hold one person. This is how it will tie his destiny. This is how he will get married to a very innocent lady and be manifesting things that he doesn't know. I set you free right now. This is a place of liberty. Leave him. Leave him. He's free. Oh, Nelly, 
Setting families free right now from marital delay. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. All those affected, as you count three, the fire of God will sweep across this place. There are marital destinies that have been tied down. Some of you, you are standing, but you are representing your family in the name that is above all names. Right now, anyone tied under any manifestation spirit husband spirit wife every manifestation of darkness as you shout the name jesus right now i command those doors to be open one two three free i set you free now right now right now right now be free I open up doors of marriages inside and outside. Be free. Be free. Every spell, every curse stopping your marital destiny. Hallelujah. Mommy, please can I talk to you? Your time of visitation has come because the Lord is saying he's going to wipe your tears and he's going to do this speedily. It's by the hand of the Lord. It's where is your husband, man? Do you know why I'm asking you this? Because your situation is like in a similitude of that of Sarah, but God is going to wipe your tears. Please believe me. When I pray for you, 
I'm praying for marital delays. And then I'm looking at you. And the Lord is saying that this woman does not even have a husband. At the point I even say, ah, what is this? Is that true? And I'm asking myself, but I'll pray for you. You, you trust God to settle down? I'll pray for you. Yes, it will happen. It will happen. Anyone here due for marriage? Listen. Anyone here, be it yourself or any member of your family that is long overdue for marriage. Right now, I prophesy in the name that is above all names. Let those doors be open now. May those doors be open now. Something is happening in this place. May those doors be open now. May those doors be open now. Madam, you will stand before the people of God when your wedding card is out. If there is a God in heaven, I break that curse right now. Now! And I release your marital destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is the Lord God Almighty? Is the Lord God Almighty? The earth is full of His glory. My life is full of Your glory. And the people say, Holy. Oh, oh, and the people say, Hallelujah. All of you lift your hands. God is going to do something amazing here right now. Listen. Everyone is standing for himself now, not for family. Please lift your hands. Listen. I'm seeing powers that have tied down the advancement of people. Listen to me. Because the Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing someone standing with a sword. And this is a sword of judgment. This one is not for families again. There are many of us, you are walking, but you are standing because nothing is moving. Right now, in the name of Jesus, many of you will literally feel the fire of God come upon you like a baptism is burning chaffs, burning chains. Some of you, your academics are the way they are right now because of powers. Neke paratika. Come on, now. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, chains be broken, be broken. Be broken. Chains be broken. Baptisms are happening. Baptisms of fire. Personal deliverances of fire. 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 The fire of the Holy Ghost. It's time for you to move forward. Fresh fire to move forward. Fresh fire. No stagnation. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hiya, yeah, 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 yeah. We are still going to do this again. Listen, I'm telling you, this is the root problem of many of the our predicaments. There are there are forces. Please follow me. This is the part you get to participate. Lift your hands again. Lord, what is it that has tied your people down? They have prayed for others. They have ministered to others. But right now, like a volcano, let the fire of God sweep across this place. Right now, let it burn the roots. Let it burn the roots. 
set the roots on fire set the roots on fire let your people make progress hallelujah lift your hands let's enter the realm of your academics now there are horns tied people's cgpa tied people's minds but he said i have sent carpenters lift your hands it's not everyone that is dull there are people who are studying you are doing your best right now all of those ones your hands fire is coming on your hands just your hands there will be a mighty deliverance right now one two three fire on your hands on your hands fire academic liberty fire on your hands we break those chains we break those chains we break those chains come on join me as you pray join me as you pray academic change be broken Hallelujah. There are some of us, listen, God is setting people free tonight. One cycle of tragedy, as soon as it's finishing, another one is starting. It, it never comes to a point where your family can experience peace. The Bible says, and he dug a well, and they came and closed it. He dug another one, and they closed it. And he dug the third one, and they left it, and they said, Reho both. The Lord has given me room. I'm praying right now. Please pay attention to what I'm doing. This is the root cause. Believe me, you will be wasting your time for nothing. If you don't confront these powers, you can receive temporary breakthrough. But you will get back into the same situation. Hallelujah. In fact, we are going to pray just for one minute. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. I like you to pray like a priest. In the next one to two minutes, listen. I like you to tell the Lord that whatever is the root cause, you are not concerned about the fruits and the leaves. It may be headache leave that one lord what is the root cause of my stagnation what is the root cause of my family's problem in the name of jesus let it be confronted tonight lift your voice and pray We attack the root causes of sicknesses, the root causes. Pray, pray for your business, pray for your ministry, pray for your academics. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says, The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. But there are many of us here the troubles in our lives are as a result of the mistakes and the wickedness for some of us of our parents and loved ones he said who's seen that this man is in this situation is it him 
or his father hallelujah lift your hands please lift your hands god is setting men free tonight anyone here going through circles of tragedy as a result of covenant and parental influence as you shout the name jesus after the count of three may the fire of god separate you from the mistakes of your lineage in the name of jesus one two three be separated be separated be separated now be separated i break limitations ancestral spirits tribal spirits territorial spirits right now be free every name that is in any demonic covenant we set it on fire now we set it on fire now Jesus died to set us free. Jesus truly died to set us free. It wasn't a joke. He said, but we do not see all things under his feet. Lift your hands again. Lift your hands again. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I am ready to make progress. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to break barriers. And tonight, by the blood of Jesus, I confront and challenge the root causes of my limitation. Lift your voice and begin to pray. We challenge it. We challenge powers that have limited men. There must be a release tonight. Jacob wrestled with God. Pray. 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 It's time for you to move forward. It's time for you to break limits. Break limits. I tell you, God is there are there are massive, there is an emancipation. Lift your hands again. Say after me in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus speaks for me in the name of Jesus the blood of Jesus is the price for my freedom listen keep the hands lifted just keep them lifted all instruments just stop just lift your hands and keep them lifted there is a reason why I'm saying you should keep them lifted hallelujah the spirit of God is going to walk through the crowd. Listen, just keep them lifted. Something marvelous will happen right now. I'm seeing water that God is pouring on people. Right now, let the power of God move everywhere, inside and outside. This water that I see an angel pouring is a cleansing, is a purging of many people's foundations. Just keep your hands lifted. You may not understand what is going on, but just lift your hands. If you trust that God is in this place, let the angels move right now. Row to row, line to line. Visit men, oh God. Visit men. Visit men. Katelato. Row to row. Water. There are three that bear witness in heaven. The spirit, the water, the blood. I invoke the power of these three spiritual entities right now. The mystery of the spirit, the water, and the blood. Shh. 
I tell you, see, many of you will, will walk into levels of breakthrough that will surprise you. Keep it lifted. Just keep it lifted. Keep it lifted. You don't know what is happening in the spirit. Just keep it lifted. Jesus. Shikaparia. Neketa. Mandeporiata. I see covens on fire. I'm telling you. Covens of darkness on fire. This is not just your family. This is your life now. You prayed for your family, but you need to move forward. Otherwise, men will think you are faking this thing. A chain is falling from someone's head. A chain is falling from someone's head. A chain is falling from someone's head. I see this in the spirit. A chain is falling. This is mental bondage. A chain is falling. I'm hearing sounds of chains. Hallelujah. 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 Now, before we submit the prayer request, lift your hands. You are going to mention one thing, just one. That you want God to do that everyone will know that this one I prayed it here and God did it are you getting my point now I'm just walking based on the instructions of the spirit he wants to give you a sign of his presence in your life I know you wrote many things brothers and sisters in the next one minute cry out one thing one just one don't be foolish pray pray I'm ministering by the influence of the spirit pray no matter how impossible it is pray so Topa, unto you that answers prayers will all flesh come unto you that answers prayer Soposa, leke sepanda, rekete kapa, mata leketa. What thing soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that you have received it. Believe that you have received it. There is nothing out for my God. Pray it. hallelujah hallelujah everyone let's pray in tongues for one minute as we collect the prayer request please go ahead god is just leading us to pray and he's doing many things in the background please quickly in one minute let's submit the prayer request pass it to the last person pass it to the last person ushers please cooperate with us and let's hurry up Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Keep passing the request, but listen to me. I made a vow to God. I just returned from my retreat. And one of the vows that I made to God is that I don't care what people would think about me. But if I ever have the opportunity to minister to God's people, I'd rather have an ugly message and let people get results. Are you getting what I'm saying? Part of my, my prayer, and I, I took out time to cry. I said, Lord, your people must see your hand. It says, oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My heart longs after you to see your 
power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. That means what I have seen in the sanctuary, I am also a sanctuary. Reproduce the result in my life. Hallelujah. So this program is aimed at bringing everyone into a place of personal spiritual success. And let me tell you, I know that it's not a very nice message. I wish that I didn't have to pray to confront spirits and powers that stop people. I like to preach a nice message that will just tell you that don't worry if you believe everything is has, has gone it has gone I wish I just wish it were like that but brothers and sisters I can tell you it is not it is not you will believe that lie to your detriment it is not we live in a rude world and there are forces otherwise the anointing of the spirit is useless what then is the purpose of the anointing what then is the efficacy of the blood why then does Paul tell us to put on hallelujah I want your life to experience breakthroughs see otherwise we have no right to tell people we are not faking it. Are you getting my point? If there is no breakthrough in your life, then what then is the confidence of the message that people keep saying, God is, I'm one, I believe that one result can silence a lot of questions. I'm not that believer that likes just, no, there must be an evidence in your life. I don't know how many times I saw this when I kept praying the Lord kept talking to me and said the root cause deal with the root cause of people's lives root cause I'm telling you it's not just healing alone that's why you notice I pray for the sick very quickly hallelujah We are going to pray one prayer point before we have all the prayer requests here inside and outside make sure you are participating hallelujah i like you to pray and challenge every limitation whether mental whether spiritual anything that limits you is not of god lift up your voice and confront it i break limitations if there are no limitations, you will make progress. If there are no limitations, you will make progress. Please, everyone, pray. Take this seriously. Even if you are walking, be praying as you're walking. Lord, I challenge limitations. Let there be no limits in my life. Let there be no limits in my life. Let there be no boundaries. As far as your eyes can see. As far as your eyes can see. Ushers, please, let's hurry up. Ushers, please, let's hurry up. Sopotoko patadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
that's the word we are attacking this night ye have tarried in this mountain for too long he said turn ye not words hallelujah hold on before you pray while I lay my hands here hallelujah hold the hands of the person you are going to pray if there's nobody you can join and make two or three say in the name of Jesus one more time, say in the name of Jesus. I come as an ambassador of the kingdom. And I challenge every limitation in every area of my life. I command it to bow down. The Bible says, Naaman, hear me, 2 Kings 5. Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army he said he was a mighty man but tonight we are going to confront the bots in our lives you are academically excellent but there are limitations I don't know if there are limitations in someone's life that you are saying Lord in this miracle service this is it hallelujah while I pray in the next two to three minutes instrumentalists play clash the cymbal and everyone pray hold the hands of your neighbor if he's joking leave him and hold another person
more time. Hallelujah. Listen. I believe with all my heart that God is confronting limitations. Many of you don't know what limitations are. You, poverty is a limitation. Are you getting my point? Spiritual bankruptcy is a limitation. A prayerless life is a capital limitation. A wordless life is a limitation when you are supposed to get married and you've not gotten married it's a limitation academic backwardness see there are very few people who are here for for sicknesses and all is is limitation that's the name of what you are going through hallelujah before i prophesy we'll soon have the last session and then we're, we're done we are still going to pray. Don't be tired. I beg you, just follow through with me. If you believe that I hear God and if you believe we are walking by the Spirit, I'd like you to pray. Hallelujah. Limitations. I know a brother, listen, listen. I know a brother that for many years, this gentleman was so gifted. But I'm telling you, nothing was working in his life. Please hear me. This is a true story. Very gifted. But things were tied down. Hallelujah. He did everything, did everything that, that he knew to do. But when God made him know that these things are limitations, he took a quality time of his life challenging it. And brothers and sisters, when he prevailed, doors were open. It was as if the blessings have left heaven, but to now come to this realm. And Daniel remained in prayer. Please hear me. Anything that kills your prayer life has stopped you from your breakthrough. It's not the issue of I'm called into the ministry of prayer or not. Forget that nonsense that the devil brings. Men ought always. Luke 18:1. He spake this parable. If you are alive, you don't pray because of fear. You pray because it's a spiritual transaction. It makes things possible in this realm. Hallelujah. We are going to pray one more time, and you're going to say, Lord, one more time. Visit this issue of limitation in my life and my family. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Mention the aspects where you are facing limitation. Don't feel embarrassed. Mention them and say, Lord, let your fire come upon it. Lift your voice and pray. Koinonia, pray. Pray your way to breakthrough. Sopata. Teka. Repotopakata. Sente teke pretekete superiata daraba. We lift up an incense of prayer. 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 Change lives. Break limits. Financial limits. Support sata intellectual limits marital limits job limits we break it sopotopata we break limitations business limitations ministry limitations limitations of potentials Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Every time limits are broken, the Lord will bring a man to hold your hands 
and create the opportunity for the next level of your life are you hearing what i'm saying bishop oyedeko will say there are days and there are certain days may this night be the certain day listen your next level is in the hands of a certain man the bible says they wanted to kill joseph but a certain man came and they said they wanted to buy him if not because of that certain man they would have killed him are you following me now the bible talks about a man who was crippled he could not carry himself certain men no names they lifted him and opened the sea oh god whoever is that certain man that must appear my destiny i come i compel them to come lift your voice and pray lift your voice destiny help us financial help us spiritual help us men of influence men of access sopotoposh rokotoposh reketetete men that will connect us to our next level men that will connect us to our next dimension please pray 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 lord we call them for hallelujah when jesus died hear me the prophet prophesied that his body will not see corruption but he was hanging on that cross there was no place to bury him and a certain man came called joseph of arimathea an influential man if he was poor and broke the king would not hear him the bible says a poor man's wisdom is despised you are going to pray concerning your finances does it make sense to you to pray we are going to pray and say lord whoever must appear to change my financial destiny i receive their ministry come on now pray come on now pray support it time and chance happens to them all time and chance be it a cyrus or a son of the kingdom pray we embrace their ministry we embrace their ministry So put up photos. I call them forth. Come on, pray. I call them forth. Men of influence, kings, destiny help us, spiritual help us, financial help us, academic help us. Men of influence, men who can talk to kings. Pray. Hallelujah. Please leave your neighbor. Joseph would have died in the prison. Although anointed, there are many people here, your anointing will remain dormant until God sends a man to see it, announce it, and let the world celebrate it. John the Baptist announced Jesus' ministry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of us, we have great ideas, great businesses, but there needs to be a certain man who will let the world know that great things are happening here. Please hear what I'm saying. There are many of you, your, your academic qualification is bigger than where you are. You have done your best. When you have done all you need to do, you need another man who is not you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? certain men certain men it was the wine presser that told the king he said i know my wrongs this day there is a man oh there is a man many of us have sharpened our spiritual potentials 
you have sharpened your leadership potentials. It's not pride. You know that it's time to break forth. But the distance between you and the next level is that certain man. Lift up your hands. Oh God, where is this certain man? Let him come into my life. Come on, pray one more time. takes one man to change your business one man to change your ministry one man one man hallelujah listen to me there are many of you here with great business ideas Hallelujah. All you need is capital. You have done everything you should do. You need somebody to believe in you enough. Hallelujah. Listen. Truly, the race is not to the swift. And the battle is not to the strong. One man can announce what God is doing in your life. And bring to your life men who have been designed to honor it. I shared that scripture to none of the widows in Israel was a prophet sent God sent that to the one who could see his difference and honor him many of you have been in a place you have potentials for the throne but something is tying you down because you are hanging around people who cannot see what God is doing in your life is God speaking to someone here there are many of our parents with their qualifications they should never have to beg. Even if, you, if the cost of living on earth is one million per day, they should not be begging. But they need one man to announce them. One man to recommend them. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Because this is somebody's prayer request. Oh Lord, if somebody can believe in my business enough to pump even if it's just 100,000 there. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us in ministry here we are great people this ministry you see today we enjoy recommendations mysterious recommendations while I was coming somebody was trying to call me again and again from the UK and he was saying man of God don't ask me how I got to find out about you and have your number he said when a man is in trouble he will look for help anyhow are you getting my point while you are sitting down to sleep somebody is waking others to talk about you but you must activate it it doesn't happen by magic are you getting what i'm saying there are many professors and doctors being underutilized because there is a system that cannot honor what they carry there are many of you who graduated with excellent results you've even added masters and the king sent for joseph somebody must send for you to leave the level that you have and i prophesy whoever should send for you in the name that is above all names listen listen there is a man of god a popular man of god i'll not mention names the man had the gift of god like whatever but nothing could announce that grace are you hearing what i'm saying people needed his anointing and his gift but nobody could announce it and then something happened one day he entered a taxi true story when he entered a taxi the holy spirit told him sow a seed of thirty thousand naira to the driver and he didn't have much and he told the driver take and he sowed that seed ah the driver looked at him he said what will i give you he said nothing he said sir can i collect your number and he collected his number please listen to me this is a true story when he collected his number the guy dropped he said talk may god bless you he was feeling bad he did not know that that was his moment of victory listen the very next person that will enter that car listen they were part of the regional organizers of redeem the convention in uk are you getting me one of the regions and then the man was talking and said, Kai, we're looking for a man of God to complete the ministers we are bringing. 
and we need men of integrity you know and the driver said sir there was a man that gave me his number this guy is a true man of god and that was it i'm serious they called him and they said sorry we are from this this region of redeem i tell you they brought that man after that ministration there were so many men of god that he never would have been able to see are you getting my point they all called him and said we'd like you to come and and minister mike mudok met a young man who was very gifted gifted but there was nothing working in his life and mike mudok looked at him and came and he said god told me to bless you he wrote 17 letters to different ministries and said this is an anointed man please open doors for him and the guy got 17 invitations everybody it does not take time to change your story what looks like a mountain is in the pocket of another person are you hearing what i'm saying are you tired of praying are you tired of praying because we must call them for i don't want to waste your time let me just share it i don't know if you share this testimony did you share your testimony Erima? i'm not sure he shared his testimony maybe at an appointed time but let me say a bit of it what ambassador eh? Unilever this come he just came back today we met together at the airport in Abuja and then we came back together by the grace of God are you getting my point and by the ministry of just one great man prof hallelujah he has been selected as the ambassador of Unilever Nigeria I, listen 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 the race is not to the swift they just came back from their training in lagos and we even bombed i was waiting for my luggage and i just saw him and they had told me he called me in lagos and he said he was around we never met how god can change a man's story my father worked for more than 10 or 15 years as assistant director of engineering there was no man to lift him his genius were rising and they, they, they just trampled this man. And it so happened that one man who used to be his junior, he went, when we went for crusade in 2006, six years, he was the one who interpreted for me. And he was also the one who interpreted for Renard Bonke when he came to Joss. He was that man. On account of the kindness, he went and said one or two things about my father. And when they went to my father's um, CV and all of that, they said, where has this man been? They said immediately he should leave Joss and report to Lagos. He has been there for three years now. Many of us are praying, Lord, take me to the next level. I'm telling you the secret. You need a man. Hear me. There are things you cannot do for yourself. You may be anointed, but your grace will remain there until a man can announce. You may have a great business, a multi-million and billion dollar business. But it takes one man to believe in you and announce you. Are you getting my point? I know one of my friends. He was my classmate. Very intelligent and brilliant guy. This guy finished, furthered his education. There was nobody to speak for him. And this guy kept struggling for years. Nobody to speak for him. And one day I, I prayed. I said, oh Lord, but help this guy. This guy has paid the price look when i say i i think i will classify him as a genius and i'm not telling a lie but i know other people before they even finish service the road has been made plain you need someone in your life please pray and say oh god send this man that can believe in me and announce what you have invested in my life please pray send a man to change my music ministry oh god send a man send a man into my family koinonia pray we are rounding up sopotopata send a man send a man send a man send a man into my life pray for your business Pray for your job. One recommendation is all you need. One man who can believe in you. Struggling continues until there is a voice that can speak for you.
struggling continues until there is a man that can believe in you and invest in your grace hallelujah rise up on your feet I want to prophesy into your life I truly believe that this miracle service will bring remarkable results hallelujah lift your hands please as much as possible if you can stand stand inside and out has thou commanded thy money this system of God's kingdom does not work without it being activated hallelujah don't get too familiar that every miracle service we are speaking there is something that is happening hallelujah we are entering the eighth month and I want to pray for you right now father in the name of your son Jesus Christ the son of the living God I prophesy right now whoever needs to come into anyone's life for the next dimension of their lives to open up I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus I call them forth right now in the name of Jesus business help us ministry help us marriage help us anyone called jobless in this place in the name that is above all names we command by the power of the holy ghost let doors of job be opened right now let it be open right now anyone called barry 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 in the name that is above all names we provoke fruitfulness we provoke fruitfulness hallelujah anything in your life that is dying business ministry potentials your gift your ideas your proposals your letters your visions your dreams in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I knock on the door of life and I command that let there be life 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 to that dry bone hallelujah everything that represents tragedy and disfavor in your life that it keeps working for others until it gets to your turn in the name that is above all names may supernatural doors of favor be open right now hallelujah I want to pray for your finance the Lord is leading me to do this as many of you who believe it please can you hold a seed in your hand get a seed for some of you it may be a sacrificial seed if you don't believe it just, just forget about it we don't cajole people we don't tell lies I want to speak into your finances hallelujah please lift it up is our prayer and our duty that God will come through in every area of our lives well let me tell you something it will take a seed to open up the heavens just leave the hands leave the hands I want to rebuke the devourer for some of you this is for you a seed of mercy to speak over your non tithing for some of you this is a seed of wisdom to open you up to ideas of wealth for some of you this is a seed of open heavens a seed of breakthrough just lift it up lift it up hallelujah. the Lord is showing me 11 people the fire of God is coming on your seed from your hand 11 people 11 people right now Lord, let your power move. Let them know 
that this is not just a conjuring of men 11 people 11 people super yatamba let that seed be salted with fire we give it a voice in the realm of the spirit please lift it up let me speak with this seed ayah the power of god is moving because poverty poverty is one thing that god hates don't ever let anybody convince you that god is the author of lack and poverty your seed your seed is the key to getting out of this level trust me this is not a financial gimmick father right now with this seed in the mighty name of jesus every spirit of poverty goodness goodness how could we have ended this service without prophesying look at spirits i see it in the spirit there is an exit of wicked forces tying people's finances father in the name of jesus we release by the mystery of divine supply let there be abundance now let there be abundance now everything that has tied your financial life and that of your family we contend together as a family that it must be released in the name of jesus go ahead and drop the seed and pray in tongues quickly please we're rounding up please quickly ushers let's save time many of you will experience breakthroughs mighty breakthroughs lift your hands we are not done please we are out of time we have to hurry up please make sure you drop something make sure a seed leaves you hallelujah hallelujah keep the hands lifted the ushers will get to you but please there is somebody outside ah, a mighty manifestation the spirit of poverty is being broken outside outside just lift your hands please i know we're out of time just give me one minute you don't need to bring the people outside just keep the, the hands lifted father whoever those people are let the fire of god locate them right now right now right now right now poverty be broken i cast that spirit I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Hallelujah. Say the blessing of the Lord is my inheritance. Say the blessing of the Lord is my inheritance. And through my giving, I access that inheritance. Father, now I'm praying for you now every limitation over anyone's life may that limitation fall now and every destiny helper that needs to come into your life to bring your life partner to bring your business partner to bring to connect you with graces in the name of jesus we release them into your life hallelujah give jesus praise Lord Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Let me make an altar call very quickly right now. There are many of us here. You have never given your heart to the Lord. Please listen, inside and outside. We've never truly made that commitment to Jesus. Some of us have given our hearts to the Lord, but we have found ourselves derailing. And tonight, God is calling you home. Wherever you are, please leave your seat and come right now. Celebrate them. They are coming. Celebrate them. Don't wait for anybody. Jump up on your feet and come. Outside, wherever you are, God is talking to you and saying you need to make your, your ways right with Jesus. Please come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for anybody. Don't be ashamed. I know there are a number of people outside. Jesus is calling you to make your ways right 
Jesus is calling you. Keep coming. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're out of time. Keep coming. Pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. Take my everything. Use me for your glory. Today, I make Jesus Lord of my life. I make up my mind to walk with the Spirit of God. I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. And I receive the grace of God to live a victorious Christian life. Father, I pray for these ones. Bless them. Anoint them. Use them. May their decisions last. May their decisions be true. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for making this decision. I'd like you to follow the usher. Follow the usher and he's going to lead you. Hallelujah. Now, while I take the announcement, if this is your first time of worshiping with us, I'd like you to leave your seat and just run out here. We want to bless and speak a word of prophecy over you. God bless you. We celebrate you. Outside, no matter how far you are, come. Come, encourage them, Koinonia. Encourage them. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. Come on, Koinonia. This is not the best. We are grateful people in this house. We are grateful people. He brought them by the finger of God. Hallelujah. Keep coming. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Thank you so much for making our time to come. Hallelujah. We honor you. We celebrate you. This is Koinonia, a meeting put together by Eternity Network International. This is our miracle service. We are here every Friday and God is building us. We want to pray and prophesy into your life right now. I want you to believe it because you will see the hand of God. The Bible says, who has believed our report and to whom the hand of the Lord has been stretched? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Saints of God, stretch your hands and let's bless them. They came because they believed that God will step into their lives. Stretch your hands. We prophesy over every aspect of your life. God is coming through for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever challenge you came here with, we are assuring you that you will not return with it. We bless you with hunger for the things of God. We bless you with the spirit of prayer. We bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with love for God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you with the favor of God. You are like a well-watered garden. In the mighty name of Jesus, may you be mightily used of God. In Jesus' name. Thank you once again for coming. Please, I'd like you to follow the usher waving his hands. They'll have your details. They'll welcome you very briefly. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.